My name is Rachel Chapman. I live in Nightdale, North Carolina, and I'm here to talk about the right to die and how I think it's a really important topic. In 2010, I was at my bachelorette party. At the end of the night, we went swimming and my best friend playfully pushed me into the pool. I suffered a spinal cord injury and I am now a C6 quadriplegic. As a quadriplegic, I have impairment in four limbs. I'm not fully paralyzed in all of my limbs, but I have no hand function, obviously can't walk, and limited arm function. My left hand is a little bit less useful. It's a lot tighter. The paralysis has kind of tightened my, my joints here, so this one's for fighting people. <laughs> Through surrogacy, I have a beautiful little girl named Kaylee, and she is six years old now. There's a lot of challenges being a mom with a disability, but she's adapted to me. We kind of like do things as a team, and she doesn't even notice, like I'm just her mom. And so everything between the two of us totally works out. I should have access to any law that anyone else has access to, and that includes the right to die where it's legal. And I see no correlation to disability rights and the right to die act. It has nothing to do with each other. People with disabilities should have access, just like anyone else, to affordable housing, to healthcare, to businesses, all sorts of things. Whatever able-bodied people have access to, so should we. Anyone with a disability who has a problem with the right to die for all people makes no sense to me. There's a lot of things that people with disabilities don't have access to. We are discriminated against, and I'm all about fighting for those things, but it is not an issue when it comes to the right to die. As someone with a disability, I personally have the ability to think for myself, and nobody's going to prey upon me, convincing me that I should end my life. It's just not how it works. I think if I wanted the ability to die in a dignified way because I was terminal, I should have that right. People with the Not Dead Yet movement, we agree. We agree that people with disabilities should have access to health care, access to housing, and we shouldn't be discriminated against. So if we agree on those things, we should all agree that we should all have the right to die where it's legal. I hate it when people argue with the term, oh, it's a slippery slope. I don't believe the term slippery slope should be an argument for any of this. I think that's what a lot of people from different disability organizations are using, and I don't think that's right. I think what we should be doing is fighting for what's on the table right now, and right now we're talking about people who are six months terminal, whether you have a disability or not. In 60 years of medical aid and dying in America, there is no case that we know of of a slippery slope case with a person with a disability or without. If I was talking to a group of people with disabilities about medical aid and dying, I would tell them this law is not coming for you, this law is including us. There are certain advocacy groups who believe that this is some huge conspiracy to get rid of people with disabilities, like it's targeting them. And in fact, this is not denying rights, it's expanding rights. This is an equal playing field and it only applies to people who are six months terminal. If I was speaking to a disabled rights group who oppose dignity in dying, I would say you are fighting the wrong fight. There are so many other issues out there that include affordable housing and affordable health care. Those are worthy causes and I will stand with you on that. But when it comes to dignity in dying, it is not a disability rights issue. As a North Carolinian, the legislature has had a bill on the table for four sessions now and they have done nothing. If I were to speak to them, I would say, let's get moving because people are dying in pain, they are suffering, and they shouldn't have to. I have a dog named Petey. He's 13 years old now. I got him when he was a little baby and now he's really suffering. He has severe osteoporosis, he has arthritis, he has what's called canine cognitive disorder which is basically like dementia for dogs and he's suffering. I love him enough that I don't want him to suffer and we are going to make the choice to, to let him go. I don't understand why we allow that for our pets but we don't allow that for humans.